And you're watching Book TV on C-SPAN 2. We are on location at Pepperdine University in Malibu, California as part of our university series. We like to visit universities and colleges and talk to professors who are also authors. Joining us now is Craig Detweiler. His book, I Gods, How Technology Shapes Our Spiritual and Social Lives. Here's the book cover, but Professor Detweiler, before we get into that, what do you teach here at Pepperdine? I am a filmmaker first, and so I teach screenwriting, I teach production, I help students navigate the entertainment industry. And you're also director of the Center for Entertainment. Is that part of your, your professorship here? Yes, it's, it's a bit of a think tank looking at uh, how media and culture uh, impact each other, you know, sort of on both sides, you know, how film uh, shapes our public conversation and how maybe, uh, you know, students can figure out, you know, how to contribute to hopefully the greater good. Well, your book, I Gods, is listed and classified as Christianity and culture. Why is that? Mm. Um, well, I'm also trained as a uh, theologian. I'm a graduate of Fuller Theological Seminary. And so I've always been interested in uh, how um, religious feelings are transmitted across culture. I'm a person who's been moved by moving pictures. And uh, so this is a chance for me to, to um, consider how the, the small screen that we carry in our pocket is slowly overtaking that big screen of, that, of cinema. That big screen of cinema, but also of religion. Well, that's right. Um, well, what I do in the book is I look at these new companies that have essentially overtaken our lives, whether it's Apple, Google, uh, Facebook, Amazon. Those are sort of the big four um, who, uh, at this point, we're spending so many hours in a given day either on their devices or in their platforms that I wanted to figure out um, in how they've built their software, how does that affect uh, our relationship to each other and even our relationship to God. And you quote Kevin Kelly from Nerd Theology. We tend to see God reflected in nature, but my bet is that technology is the better mirror of God. Next to that is a picture of Jesus <laughs> with a laptop. Well, he's got the whole world in his hands, I think, is, uh, is what we're, we're, we're thinking there. Well, yeah, Kevin Kelly is such a fascinating character. I mean, he was uh, one of the early editors of, of Wired magazine, and, uh, and yet he also comes from a, a position of faith. And, and so I think he has looked at technology and how we organize our lives, um, how, how engineers structure things as a way of maybe talking about the ways in which God might be the original technologist, you know, and, and when we look at our DNA, you know, which uh, that, that human genome project that, that Francis Collins um, headed up, to what degree is the information that we have in, in our bodies sort of a, a reflection? Are we sort of wired or encoded in, in, an, in an organized fashion? Um, and, and what role um, Again, does God, maybe the technologist, play in all of that? Are you worried about how much time we're spending with technology? Well, from a, yeah. A Christian point of view? Well, hey, as a, as a parent of a 14-year-old and a 12-year-old, um, we deal with a lot of technology in our households. And, and the day that my kids said, I want a cell phone, I had to sort of think, well, what does putting a smartphone uh, with access to all the world's information via the internet, what, what does that do, you know? And, and what kinds of filters uh, might we need to help them understand how to deal with that onslaught? I think all of us are feeling the effects of, of too much information. And so, uh, you know, how do we sort through all of the prompts, all of the interruptions, uh, all of the things tugging at our attention? And how do we sort out what's urgent, perhaps from what matters? You write, Jesus was more than a carpenter, he was a techie. <laughs> Indeed. Uh, well, it's funny, uh, you know, everybody knows in a sense that Jesus uh, was the son of a carpenter. They don't realize that that Greek word for carpenter is actually the word tecton. And so uh, it could be, you know, as we enter this, this new century, that we will come to think of, uh, of Jesus as more than maybe somebody, you know, good with his hands, a handyman type of person. 
But was he uh, more of a builder? Was he more of a designer? Was he more of an engineer? And uh, maybe if we want to understand what Jesus looks like, we maybe need to look, uh, you know, not to the front of the auditorium, but to the back of the auditorium. Maybe he's that person uh, with some gaffer's tape and a flashlight and uh, always figuring out how to tweak things and uh, fix things. Are we idolizing technology? Who do we idolize technology? Uh, I think when I allow it to be the first thing that I interact with in the morning and the last thing that I do at night, I, I've allowed it to order my day. Um, you know, uh, the monks actually invented the clock as a way of, the mechanical clock as a way of ordering our days so that we would understand there's a time for work and there's a time for prayer and there's a time for food. And um, I feel like now we're allowing our, our smartphones to sort of dictate the hours of our day. And, and I wonder if our relationship is, is a little too intense. It's our closest companion. And uh, do we need um, to turn it off occasionally, to, to do, take back uh, the power in our lives, perhaps to power down in order to power up. Do you power down? Yes, uh, you know, our family, uh, I think, loves to leave our phones behind. I mean, we live here in, in California, and so uh, the temptation might be to take that phone to the beach, but isn't that supposed to be time away, time apart? Uh, you know, time to, to, to think, time to not be interrupted, um, time to wander, isn't there? Uh, a need for space in our lives um, to, uh, I guess, make room to be surprised by what's in front of us rather than this thing that's uh, sort of telling us what's next. Is that tough to do? Oh, it's very hard to uh, separate ourselves from technology. Um, you know, I, I have an assignment in class where I ask the students to put it away for 24 hours to, to have no you know, no, no cell phone use, uh, put away their computers, their laptops, uh, even their television set. And it almost drives them crazy. They're like, how can I possibly do this? My parents will panic. They'll wonder, you know, what am I doing? Well, where am I? Um, and yet what they discover is they might begin that activity feeling very harried, but as they turn off, they actually make more space and they suddenly get a little more clarity and a little more focus. They might do a week's worth of homework in one afternoon because they suddenly are able to concentrate on one thing rather than being fragmented and distracted by many things. Are there students who can't do it? <laughs> well, all the students are supposed to do it. Um, uh, I don't know, some of them confess how hard it is, you know, and that they might have sneaked a peek and kind of, uh, you know, picked up, uh, you know, a little bit of update when they heard that click. Um, but what I find is that they, they end up uh, kind of remarkably relieved uh, a little bit freed by this thing that is uh, always beckoning them. And um, I think they, they start to, to wonder if, it was, if there's the possibility of recovering a bit of an electronic Sabbath, you know, putting, putting a, 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 a pause uh, on our lives on a regular basis. Craig Detweiler, is it possible to be a good Christian and still very tech focused? Oh, I certainly hope so. Uh, I mean, I am. I mean, I'm on Facebook. I'm on Twitter. Uh, you know, nobody sort of interacts with, with social media more than I do. Um, and yet I'm just trying to uh, help us to, to, to refocus, to appreciate the genius of uh, the iGods, of, of people like, like Steve Jobs and, and the engineers at Google and, and Mark Zuckerberg. Um, they have redefined our world in amazing ways. They've helped us prob solve the problems of abundance of too much information, of, of too many songs, of too many friends. You know, they've helped us, I think, bring order to the chaos of our world. Uh, and yet, uh, we, we, life still feels a little chaotic. And so, uh, I guess I'm trying to challenge all people, not necessarily just people of faith, but all people, to question to what degree that, uh, that we've made technology an idol. And uh, perhaps to realize the limits of what it, what it can and can't do for us. You point out in here, and I just want to know the significance that both Steve Jobs and Jeff Bezos didn't know their real fathers. Why do you why do you bring that up? Yeah, that well, it's an interesting thing. Uh, you know, you have such talented, uh, uh, in a sense, uh, superior uh, and driven people behind these companies. You know, why is it that that Apple and that Amazon, the, you know, the, the 
the visionaries behind those companies were so relentless and restless in their pursuit.